Hi guys. Today we're going to be telling stories with lines with the help of Julie Moretu. I am an art teacher. I work for Arlington Public Schools in Northern Virginia. I've been teaching arts or arts related anything for about 21 years. I am national board certified. I am special ed trained. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and I have my own YouTube channel for art lessons and other art teachers. Let's talk about Julie Moretu. She is an abstract artist and let's find out what abstract is. Let's say we want to express how happy we are there are various ways to um, depict how happy we are. We can go ahead and draw ourselves happy. So on the left, you see a young boy and he is holding his arms up and he looks happy. On the right is a mark, as a mark on a paper that would be or might be interpreted as a happy uh, mark or the mark itself might make you feel happy. Um, so, on the left, we see a representational depiction of the word happy, but on the right, we see an abstract representation of the word happy. First, we're going to think of ourselves as observers. Let's observe Julie Maratu's artwork. Let's just look at it. As you see here, in this piece called Black City, there are lots of layers, lots of lines. There are areas that seem darker than others and the lines going in different directions. There are also shapes that are in the piece. This one has a bit more color than the other one and I noticed right away there's some wavy lines and some smaller marks and lines going in different directions which seem to have been drawn with a ruler. Here, this one reminds me of a map like this because it has some lines that are straight and seem to have been done with a ruler but then there's some marks that are darker, there's some marks that are, are uh, lighter and some of it are see-through and you also see some layering and I also see a shape. Now we're going to think of ourselves as storytellers. Now these works, believe it or not, were used to tell stories. Julie Maratu used these artworks as a way to tell a story. Again, not a representational story, but an abstract one. Let me explain. When you are making a story with just lines and intensity of lines and different kinds of marks, you are relying heavily on gestures. Gestures means um, when you look at it, it kind of tells you how the arm might have been moving. Let's look at the mark on the left and how the arm might have been moving. Usually when we make a check mark, we move our arm very quickly. Um, usually when we make a beautiful calligraphy letter J, we are gonna make it carefully and slowly. So these marks were made with different gestures. And with this knowledge, you can understand how you can use different marks to tell a story because each one of these marks might carry a meaning that shows both gestures but also shows feeling. So here are three different marks and we're going to start thinking about what kinds of feelings might be associated with these different kinds of marks. Okay, so um, let's do a, a little practice and you're going to need a pencil and a paper and I'm going to read out some of these feelings and I want you to make a mark that might make you think of these feelings. So let's think about a feeling of openness. Now what kind of mark might you make 
to express openness. How about calm? What kind of mark might you make to express calmness or patient? Pick one of these words and make a mark and then pick a different word and make a different mark and see how they differ. And you start understanding how marks might be used to express gestures, but also feelings. For example, a mark that you make to express joy might be absolutely different than one that you use to make grouchy. It might also be lighter. It might be done much quicker. It might be more uh, rounded. Grouchy might be more sharp, might be darker, uh, might be done with more force. So now that we understand how we as artists can be a storyteller using abstract lines in our work, we are gonna get started. The last part of our activity today is seeing ourselves as experimenters. We are artists and as artists, we are experimenting all the time. So how are we gonna experiment? Um, I want you to go get a collection of different kinds of mark making tools. Um, here are some examples. You can get marker, you can get a watercolor set, you can get pencils, you can get an ink pen, uh, colored pencils or Sharpies. And I want you to just make different marks on a piece of paper and see how the actual mark that it makes can also be used to communicate feelings or a gesture. So your job for today is to create an abstract drawing that tells a story or communicates a feeling. So let's get started. I am going to tell you a story of when my spider was loose in my apartment. I came home from having dinner with my family and I found that I had left my spider cage open and this was not an ordinary spider. This was a tarantula. So can you imagine what I must have felt when I found that my tarantula, who's as big as my hand, was missing? So I'm going to right now use different kinds of lines and different tools, different mark making tools, such as markers and Sharpies and colored pencils to tell you a story, but in an abstract kind of way. And I'm also going to try to use my gestures, gestures, different kinds of gestures, either quick ones or slow ones to tell you a specific part of the story. In the end, when somebody looks at my work, they might walk away with a feeling. They might not know the details of my story, but they will certainly walk away with a feeling. So let's get started. I'm going to work and you're going to work. Let's work together. I'm gonna go get my paper and my tools and let's meet back here. So pause and go get your materials and let's get started. So I'm gonna tell you the story of my spider and without actually drawing a spider, it's just gonna be lines. So I had a beautiful spider and she was so pretty. And when people came over, they really liked her and I would feed her and watch her in her cage. One day, I went to dinner with my family. When I came back, I found the cage open. Oh, <gasps> the cage is open. Where, 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 where could my spider be? Where could the spider be? I looked one way. I looked another. I looked here. Nowhere. I went to sleep. I'm gonna use a different one. I went to sleep very carefully. I wrapped myself with lots of blankets so the spider wouldn't get in under the blanket and pinch me. In the middle of the night, 
I heard a little footsteps and there was the spider sitting on the rug. I ran to go get a bowl and I caught it. Whoop! I caught it and I put it back in the box and there it sits nice and quiet. I decided after this that maybe I'm not meant to have a spider, that I should just maybe have a puppy or a kitty. And that's the end of my story. So you see, this is the final work and it's a story using lines and gestures and sometimes shapes. Also, I use lots of different drawing materials to make my marks. When somebody looks at this, again, they're not gonna know what the story is about, but they might get a feeling from noticing the quick gestures and the darkness of the lines and the intensity of the colors in some areas. So definitely this is a very dramatic story because some lines go flying to the right, some go flying to the left, but there's also some layers. There's some calm, carefully made marks such as the spirals at the beginning. So there you go. I cannot wait to see what kind of abstract storytelling you are going to share with me. Let's get started. Did you make something today? Did you make an abstract story? I cannot wait to see it. Please don't forget to share your work with me by sharing it on social media with the hashtags Catellus Art, and I will definitely see it and comment too. So thank you so much for being with me today. I hope that you enjoyed meeting a new artist being inspired by her work and being a practicing artist yourself. See you guys.